Riley Smith, welcome to the call room, Road to Seattle. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing really good. Excited to have you on. I think after last cross country season, started getting all the DMs to get this kid, Riley Smith, on from Florida. We're finally making it happen. So I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. That's awesome. I'm kind of surprised people were asking about me, to be honest. But <laughs> Do you not yeah, notice that? Cool. I mean, we can talk about this in today's conversation, but you definitely have like a presence on TikTok at least. I, yeah. I maybe it's from that, like people invested in your story and they're, they want to hear it. On yeah, I guess, I, I guess the TikTok guys are like, are pretty loyal to me because I've been doing it since like sophomore year and I was trash. So some of them are a little vocal. I think very few high schoolers get on social media and document the journey for you. When did you decide to start doing that? And is it full circle looking back on it now? Um, really? I think I did, it might have been early sophomore year, but also might have been like freshman year, like right when I started, I kind of forget, but honestly, like, I just liked showing what I was doing because I had a, you know, I had a feeling that I was going to start getting better. So I just wanted to like post something to show that I wasn't always like good. So then when, when I started getting better, there'd be like kind of like a, a paper trail of, of like, like a trail showing like where I started and, and. I can look back on the progress. Is it crazy to see just how much you've improved in high school looking back at freshman year? Yeah. I mean, I've, even when I first started, uh, I had kind of like the same goals I have now, just, um, like the time, like time wise, like, you know, running under four and, and stuff like that. Like I, I would say I always wanted, like, I always felt like I could and I always, um, like, almost, I don't know, I don't know if it's planned. I don't know if I'd say planned, but like, it was definitely a goal from the start. So I wouldn't say like, I'm surprised uh, to where I've gotten, but I would say it's like good knowing that, that I wasn't wrong thinking that I could do it. What's the, the journey and progression felt like in terms of how far you've come in this sport? We can get into your freshman year and some of the times you've been running, but you know, as I'm talking to you, just as a fan of the sport, I fully expect you're going to be one of the guys to break four. If I heard your name four years ago, I, I would have been like, who? From where? <laughs> what's that What's that journey been like specifically as more people are starting to notice who Riley Smith is? Yeah, so really, I took distance. I, I didn't take distance running seriously until the summer before junior year. Before that, I was kind of like on the line whether or not I wanted to be like an 800 guy or or, you know, like do more like middle distance stuff and not really go into cross a lot. But, um, before junior year, uh, I like my, I talked to my coach about stuff and, and we kind of decided that I should really focus on up in my mileage over the summer and seeing what happens in cross. And then I got sick with mono and strep throat at like the same time, like right, right when I got into my junior year of cross. So like, I don't know, people that have seen my mile spin stuff, I went from like a 1701 5K runner as a sophomore. And then junior year, I ran two races and they were like 1750s. So it looked kind of weird. But after I finally got recovered from that, which took a while, yeah, I only, I think I started getting better like right when track season started. So, so it took a couple weeks during track season to get up to speed. But, but once I, once I got out of that, I already had, like, I think definitely some of the base still kind of stuck through the sickness somehow. Uh, cause I did bounce back pretty quickly and my coach's plan was really to focus less on speed work once I got done being sick and to just kind of focus on like keep building my, my aerobics and focusing on the mile so I could get to college. And, and yeah, so that junior year track season kind of looked like out of place cause I ran four and nine in the 16, but before that I, I really hadn't done anything. So it was kind of the getting sick during cross kind of made my progression look like a lot crazier than it is. Obviously mono does play a massive role in how you feel and how you run, but I mean, 1750s to the next year being the state champion. How crazy is that? Even to like, I mean, there are very few stories like that in the sport. Yeah. I'm, it feels great to, to do that. Uh, especially, you know, the guys that are, I'm racing in 4A are fast and it's, it's, it was a pretty, it was, it was a really good race to be honest. Um, Johnny, who was, who got second, who's also going to UF with me was like, put a crazy surge with a mile to go. And we, the last mile I think was like a 430 or like low 430s. So it, it was a good race. And 
and um, the progression itself, like like I said, I, I I wouldn't say I'm really surprised by it, but it's more of just like a happy that I, I proved it because I was telling people before senior year cross season that that I was feeling strong and that and that you know my coach's goal for me was like 1530s just so I could have like a base for track. But I was telling him and I was telling other people, I was like, I don't know, like, I, I'm feeling pretty good. I think I can, if I keep progressing, then then I, I think I can win the state championship. And there's a lot of people that told me I was crazy um, to say that. And, you know, people were doubting. So that helped me out a little bit more, too. Just people saying I can't do it. That's like my favorite thing to hear is when someone says that there's no way or or I don't think you can do that. Because that, that just makes me just want to go do it to them. So, yeah. I love that. I love the mindset. So what would you say to someone listening today who's like a 1750s guy or maybe just like a mediocre runner on their team? They listen to this podcast, it inspires them. They're like, I want to be like Riley. I want to run sub 410. I want to win a state championship. What would be some pieces of advice you would give to them on their journey? You really just got to fall in love with with getting your miles in and doing tempo. And like that was the big thing for me was that I was I was kind of a lame and didn't didn't want to do tempo stuff and I wanted to focus on speed work and and I was running like 25 30 mile weeks and um you know I didn't just jump straight up to like 55s and stuff but but you have to kind of you, you want to commit to like fully commit to what you're doing and not just you know half assing it or or just doing what your coach tells you to do and then going home and doing whatever you want but like if you want to be able to soak in all like your you're going up in miles gradually. Um, you're going to gradually need some more rest. You're going to need to eat better. And all these things kind of follow along with training harder. And I mean, this year I've been training, I've been training pretty hard, but it hasn't been, you know, too hard on my body just because as my, like my load increases, I just commit more outside of running to running like, like, um, like eating and, you know, the nutrition, the recovery, all that stuff. And if you're, you know, if you're running, you know, mediocre times in cross country and track and, and you're, and you're really looking to, to, to make the progress that, that you want to make is you can't just like expect it to happen by showing up to workouts and then, you know, doing a couple easy runs a week. Like you have to um, have structure in your life and outside of track and, and really develop a mindset that, you know, you're not just you're not just a mediocre runner is that you're just, you're just not there yet. And, and that was, that was big for me is that I never really saw myself as like, as like someone who was slow. Like even when I wasn't fast, I was think like, Oh, these, these guys just had a little bit more time than me. I just need to keep staying on track and focusing and eventually I'm going to catch up. Riley, take me back to when you first got your start in the sport of running, where, where did the journey begin? So I was a soccer player before and I played, I was like guest playing on um, MLS next teams and stuff like, like the Jack, like the Jacksonville teams. And, you know, since I'm from Gainesville, there's, there's not really like that great of a soccer presence here. There's, there's a couple good teams, but like, if you want to get to the next level in soccer, you kind of have to live in a big city or, and like really get in one of those good programs or move. And, and I could tell that, uh, you know, my family wasn't really down for moving so I was, I kind of made the decision when I saw some guys on the track team and I talked to the coach a little bit and some of the guys that were on the team were, were like my friends. So they were kind of trying to convince me and I didn't do cross country freshman year cause I was still playing soccer. But then I, I came out for the track season and I went from like, I ran, I ran like a, like barely under sub five, my first race. And then I just, I think I PR'd every race of the season besides one. And I just ran the 1600 like over and over again. And I got down to uh, like a 430, which got me to States. And then I ran a 427. So like that was pretty, uh, like not many people run 427 as a freshman. So that kind of like, like seeing that and, and then comparing myself to people, I, I weighed my options with soccer and I was like, you know, why would I try and, you know, bet on getting on a really good soccer team or stuff like that when I can, when I really think I have a future in running. And that's when I just like made the switch and, and decided I wanted to, to focus on running. You mentioned to me a minute ago, lo- essentially loving the haters, loving the the hate, the noise for you as, as you're approaching some of these historic barriers, you know, the, the, the noise is only going to increase how much does the notion of, of people saying things about your senior year track season fuel you right now? 
I mean, I love it. Uh, I, I love people supporting me and people, you know, recognizing how much work I put in. But, but yeah, like I said, you know, people that doubt and people that, that want to talk down or, you know, pretend they're better than me or, you know, whatever, whatever they want to say that I, I love it. And, you know, the faster I get, the more you said, it's the more it's going to be. And I think that's, um, you know, going to work to my advantage because, you know, the bigger the meat, the, the better I seem to race. Um, just cause I don't know the, maybe my mindset, I, I don't know how it works really, but, but I, I, you know, I love crowds. I, um, you know, even though I'm a little introverted outside of, outside of track, I would say that like once I'm running, uh, I feel like I'm pretty extroverted, which is, which is cool. And I, 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 you know, like racing at the armory and like at Milrose and Nike, like those were like, even though they were, you know, a little, a little nerve wracking, um, some of the most fun moments of my life. And, and when I, when I'm in those big races, you know, um, I wouldn't say I get like nervous, like really nervous or really stressed, but almost, I feel like, like I have like a duty to, to do what I, I know I can do. And I just, I don't let myself, um, I don't let myself make a mistake just because of some external factors when I know what my body's capable of. I may have message you this but a big reason i wanted to do a podcast with you besides I, I try to appease the the audience if many many people ask i'll generally try to get that person on so that was part of it but the other part was like i have seen what you've done this season and then i started looking back on what you did in the indoor season and i was like my gosh no one is talking about this kid and i feel like people are only talking about like the jojos daniel clay um drew griffith like all those guys who 100 percent deserve to be talked about but as a fan of the sport, as someone who covers the sport, I'm looking like, who's that guy that can kind of come out of the shadows? Like the Simeon Birnbaum type where it's like, where'd he come from? I think that's you. What's it like to embrace that kind of underdog mentality of like, I might show up to Brooks PR and, you know, no one's going to talk about me. The announcers won't talk about me, but hey, I'll turn some heads. I'll make some things happen in the race. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely uh, cool to like... I don't know. Some people say that like, it's kind of like disrespectful that people aren't talking about me, but I would say it's, it's cool. You know, um, a lot of the, the stress put on people like Danny to like, cause I mean, Danny has been so impressive this season, you know, even like a, a good performance. That's not great. Can be people like saying that, that, you know, he didn't do what he could do, but you know, I really don't have a lot of, um, a lot of stress placed on me. I, I can just go and do whatever I do, whatever I feel like I can do. And, you know, seeing people like Simeon last year that kind of just, I, I mean, didn't, didn't he stay undefeated against high school? I think, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That, that, that's, that's something that, you know, I would, I would look, want to do. And, you know, so far I have been this year. I haven't, I don't think I've lost an individual race this year um, besides cross, just like indoor and outdoor. And, you know, I said this in an interview at Nike after, after they told me that, cause I didn't even realize, but like, that's not like the most important thing in the world to me. Like, I don't care if I, you know, I go for it one race and something happens, but, but, you know, it would be cool to say that, you know, I came out of nowhere and then, um, managed to win every single race, including like big championships. And, you know, obviously it's, I wouldn't like not race at a big race just cause I don't think I'm going to win. You know, it's not impressive unless you're racing Hoka, you're racing Brooks, you're racing nationals. So you know, I'm going to try to be at um, most of these big meets coming in the out outdoor championship season. And yeah, I'm ready to do some damage. I love it. Something I learned in doing a podcast series with Simeon every week throughout the entirety of his outdoor season was he thought he was the best before he was the best. I talked to him in March when he got his butt kicked at New Balance indoors. I think he placed like fifth or sixth in the indoor mile. And he still had the confidence that like, I'm the best guy in the country and I'm going to prove it in these upcoming races. For you, you said basically the same thing verbatim. If you put those words in Simeon's mouth, I wouldn't think twice. How important do you think that mindset is of like, I'm the best, even if it's not necessarily on paper yet, to eventually become the best? Yeah, um, I think there's, you know, there's a certain amount of people that that have that, like that my, that view of things. And, you know, I've talked to like, Olympians and stuff like that. And, and, you know, most of the really elite guys that I know, um, ha like have that mindset where they just think they think they think they constantly have to prove it. Not, not that they have to like, Oh, I really, I think I need to get, you know, up to this guy's speed or these guys are better than me. It's like, I, you know, I am there. I just either need a couple more weeks of training or 
I need to just show them that I am there. And, you know, maybe I wasn't like born with thinking that maybe it was like a result of my environment because of the people I was around, you know, just, just, um, trying to teach me. And I think a lot of that's from like my dad and my trainers that like kind of implement that mentality into me, but it, it's super important to, to, um, think that way because when you're thinking that way, you're like, I don't know, in, in my mind, it's, it's almost like a little bit of like, a like anger. Like, I, like, I don't know why, but like, I need to like, like I just, when, once I'm on the line, like I get a little angry and I, and I just want to, I just want to uh, do what I need to do. <laughs> and I feel like if you don't have that, then instead of that little bit of anger or that, that need to prove yourself, it's more of a, of the nerves that people worry about before races. And they ask me, like people text me all the time on TikTok and stuff that like they need help dealing with pre-race nerves or stuff like that. And it's, it's mostly because why, why are you worried that, um, that you're not going to perform well if, if you step like I step on that line and I just think now is when I show everyone that, that, um, what I've been doing isn't just a joke. You mentioned kind of that, like angry for lack of a better word that you get on the starting line. Many people have very like just simple celebrations. I feel like your celebration is kind of becoming iconic where like you almost scream across the line and like, I wouldn't even say celebration. It almost looks like relief. Does that come from this place of like, I want to prove myself and that kind of like people can go look up your races that like, ah, uh, at the finish line, it's like, yeah, yes, sir. I just proved myself. That was me. Yeah. That's a, that's, that's kind of what it is. I mean, you kind of summed it up. It's, you know, it's kind of like a subconscious thing, to be honest. I don't like, you know, I'm not like coming down the final stretch, like, all right, what can I do today? That's going to look cool. Uh, I kind of just like, once I'm like getting there and I realize like it's in the moment that it's like, that I'm going to do it. Like I just like, it's like a testosterone boost. Like, I don't know. Uh, and, and yeah, it's, it's a little bit of relief, a little bit of, I told you, you know, it, it's a lot of things, but yeah, I mean, I didn't really think too many people like notice that. So that's actually kind of cool that you, that you noticed that it was like, it was kind of like a, a relief celebration. You mentioned how with every stage that becomes bigger, you seem to perform better. This podcast series is all about the Brooks PR meet. Let's talk about Brooks PR a little bit. When did you first discover the meet? And looking forward to this year, do you feel that sense of like, when I step on the line, this is going to be one of the biggest stages yet? And I'm I'm probably not fully ready, but like I'm gonna embrace the I'm gonna embrace the the lights, the action, all the attention, and I'm gonna to try to thrive under that pressure. Yeah. So I saw it last year once I really started you know focusing on running, and I was watching all the meets and trying to you know see how people were racing, and and I think. Uh, one of my one of the guys I was kind of friends with, Miguel. Uh, I think he ran the, the eight hundred there. So I, I was watching his race, and then I walked, tuned in the other ones too. Um, yeah, it seems like a great meet. I was seeing like uh, takeovers on Instagram where people were showing all like the kits uh, that people got, and uh, and um, they're all hanging out like all the athletes and just playing games and stuff. And it looked it looked really fun. I knew I wasn't good enough last year to 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 go, obviously. So I, that wasn't even really like a a thing in my mind. I was just kind of seeing how it, how it, uh, how it looked and then thinking like, you know what, I'm going to go try and get there next year. And yeah, uh, I was, I was debating on, on, you know, Brooks and U twenties and stuff and that in the postseason, but they, you know, they just released that, that, uh, we're not sending a team to, to U twenties. So that makes a, a very good, um, case to go to Brooks and makes the decision easy. <laughs> yeah, it makes the decision pretty easy for me. And, uh, and yeah, I know there's gonna be some fast guys there on the website. It, it says that it, like when, when you click on the schedule and you like click on the, um, the events, it like says like names of people. I think that's who's already signed up or I don't know, but really? I saw Jojo's name in the mile. I, I, so that, that makes me tempted to, uh, try and get in that mile race. Um, but I also got the uh, Instagram invite to, for the the two mile, and I also I also want to get a two mile in because uh, I missed out on Arcadia sadly, and I really wanted to be there, but it, it wasn't gonna happen. So I feel like I kind of need to to prove my fitness in the two mile too. So you know it's a hard decision of trying to figure out what I want to race there, but um, you know whatever happens, I'll be I'll be glad to do. I just want to go go race. When you think back to previous Brooks PR editions, you mentioned watching the meet last year, seeing it. You look at the two mile, Connor and Simeon, 834, 835, historic race behind them even. 
And then the mile every year is remarkable. It was very tactical last year. I think the Jackson Heidish still won, ran, ran and won in 401. And then the year before, Simeon broke four. Uh, people have broken four there before. Like the mile and two mile, regardless of which one you enter, fireworks are going to happen. How exciting is it to be a part of the meet where every year legends in the sport run and also thinking to like five, 10 years ago where Grant Fisher ran and it's like, that's where I want to be one day. It's cool to be at the same meet that he was at. Yeah, it's awesome to to look at the the people that have been running in the meet, like you said, like Grant Fisher, and just like seeing like where they're at now. And you know, I know myself, and and I know that if I'm put in the situations with these big races, and I, I'd say it's a really it's a really good chance that I'm going to come away with something that I'm proud of. And I'm just watching Brooks, how fast it always is. Um, you know, and it, I really want to be there, and I. You know, I just know that uh, the more stacked the race gets, the the more the more excited I'm going to be for it. And you know, when I step on the line and tune out all the noise, um, you know, my body's going to do uh, what it needs to do to to hopefully be in the mix and to win. You mentioned a minute ago, like quote something to the extent of like I want to prove myself in the 32 and the two mile. I haven't really. I call cap on that. Uh, first ever 3,200, you have to have like the fastest debut of a high schooler ever. I would not be surprised if that's the case. You ran 848. Uh, yeah, absolutely crazy. What's, what's that reflection where first time out in an event, you run 848, which like 10 years ago, no one was running 848. Yeah. I mean, to most people, it was pretty surprising that I did that. But to me, I was actually kind of disappointed with, with, uh, 848 because I don't really think of things like, like times and stuff from, from like, the point of view of somebody else looking in, I, I look at, I look at it as like, um, looking out for my fitness. So like wh- when I'm, when I, like, when I say that, I feel like I haven't really proved myself yet. It's, yeah. I mean, I ran an eight thirty nine at FSU against Patrick, but like people think that like, wow, I proved myself. I ran eight thirty nine, but I feel like I haven't proved myself because I know I can run faster than that. And, you know, that's part of probably what keeps me so motivated is that, you know, every time I PR, I like, I think I could have ran faster than that. Like my fitness, I know my fitness, I know I could have ran faster. So then I, you know, I'm training harder, going back out and do it, hit that time. And then I'm like, Oh, could have ran faster than that. So then it just, you know, it keeps snowballing. And, uh, it seems crazy to run, to run fast times. Like if I like put myself in my shoes like a year ago or two years ago, but when you're like doing the workouts every day and, and like looking at other people and, and comparing, it, it doesn't really seem that crazy to me anymore. Like when, when, I, when I run a run a time, it's because I do workouts that pre- predict uh, my fitness and, and um, you know, I don't really focus on, on like what could happen in a race. I just think, I mean, I, I did this, this and this in a workout and why wouldn't I be able to do it? At, at this race, you, just just because there's people there, so, um, yeah, I mean, running the the 32 is like people see my my two ever 32 races and they think it's kind of crazy, but you know, I bet you if I ran a uh, 32 last year, I probably would have been like like right over like 90 something, like if I compared it to my my mile, I just didn't have a chance to run it because I was so focused on making sure I was running the race I was the best at just so I could get to college because it was kind of like a race to to go under 410. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the training you mentioned there. I do think I we're going to plug your TikTok as many times as possible. Everyone go fo- follow Riley. Um, <laughs> I want to hear about the workout. I came across one of the workouts on TikTok. It was like 5 by K and then 2 by 800 or 1 by 800. Take me yeah, through that workout and or like any so i was like shocked by that workout any other workouts like that that have given you a lot of confidence going into some of these big races yeah another one i posted on my tiktok actually uh actually two i posted you know i'd say that workout you mentioned and then two other workouts on my tiktok were two of my like uh most like two of the workouts i really like proved to myself that i could i could run faster was um i did three by 800 with 19 minute like full recovery with just you know, like a jog, like 1200, 800 meters in between them just to get the lactic out. And I was doing it with my teammate, Evan, who's, uh, who's now a 412, 1600 runner. And we were <laughs> the first rep, we kind of paced a little bit wonky and, uh, 
we went out a little fast and then we tried to hold it back because we were supposed to progress through the three eight hundreds and we held it back a little bit too much and I went one fifty nine and he went like two oh one or two. And and I was supposed to hit like one fifty seven for all three for like the first eight hundred I was supposed to hit like one fifty seven high and then one fifty seven and one fifty six high. And I ended up getting a little a little mad that I messed it up and and the second rep I went one fifty four. And my coach was like he was like, Okay, like just go for the one fifty five just so that the splits are the, the splits are pretty even and um and and uh you don't you don't uh, mess up the workout by going too fast and then the next rep I went out in, in fifty five and ran a one fifty three on the last eight hundred. And that was like I never even ran that fat like I ran a one fifty three one eight hundred last year as my PR, but then I hadn't ran eight hundred yet. And I basically like it was a one fifty three low. So it was basically like a PR, the third rep of a workout after a one fifty four. And that was like super shocking for me to 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 see like like on paper that I actually did that because my coach wrote it down for me. But um, another workout I did was early in the season of, of like, I think it was like, it's hard to tell. I think it was right after cross. I did six by mile, 60 second rest. And my coach told me to just hang out around like 450 just to get some like slightly faster than tempo miles in. And I like came around the first, the first mile. And I said, I was like, coach, like, I feel like I'm jogging right now. Can I just you know unleash on this workout a little bit? And he was like, okay, you're pretty, you're pretty rested. So so you can, you know, do what you want to do. And I, I, I wanted to still play it safe so I get a good workout out of it. So I just progressed gradually. And I went like, I went like 450 and then four, high 440s, mid 440s, low 440s. And then I broke into like, like high 430s on my, on my last one or two uh, mile repeats with 60 seconds rest. And that was also pretty, pretty surprising because uh, before that I was really just like a 1457 cross runner. Although I think I could have ran like on a faster course or a faster race, like a, like 1440s in, in cross. But, you know, I hadn't like, like that, that workout like proved to me that, that like my aerobic base was like really stuck in there and, and, and improving after cross. So you're undefeated thus far this season, uh, both indoor, outdoor. And if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, you were the mile champion at Nike indoor. You ran 405. You were the four by mile champion. Uh, where you split 410 and then DMR runner up where you split a 402. So crazy weekend there. Outdoors, you've run 848, 839, 150 in the 800. Riley, what's the what's the limit? You sound like a guy who doesn't like to put limits on himself, but what are some of the big audacious goals that you can throw out there? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't put any limits on myself, but you know, every time I get a little bit faster, I like change my goal a little bit just so I can't get it. <laughs> like, I, I don't... <laughs> It's, I don't know if that's the right way to say, it, but like, you know, like I get, I get a little bit faster and then chase. all of a sudden, like, like my goal for the season, um, like me and my coach's goal were like, Hey, if you go from a four twelve mile as a junior and you run a four five as a senior, like that's a good progression. That's a lot more than most people, you know, could ask for and get. So, you know, it was four Oh five. And then my first race I ran, like, I think it was like a four ten or four eleven, And I was like, you know, that felt like really easy. So I was like, you know, I'm just going to, I said, coach, I'm just going to, can I just go out hard in the next race and, and try to run a 405? And he was like, I don't know if you can do that, but, but you can try. So then I went out uh, and just kind of like sprinted a mile, like solo at an indoor. And that was like a, I went through the K in 230 and my second 400 was a 58. So I like set myself up for like a four flat and then just kind of blew up a little bit and ran a 404 six. And, you know, that was like the race that like that I'm most proud of probably of my whole life was just because like I like before that, like that race before was a PR that I felt like I was jogging. So, so that was like huge to, to put that down. And after that, you know, the goal immediately shifted for me. Like I ran that and I was like, all right, I, I got to kind of, kind of lock in and go sub four. <laughs> and then, you know, now that I feel like I'm just been so close, I don't really, you know, just sub four, I don't think is going to make me happy. <laughs> I don't know. I really do want to go sub four, but you know, I want to, I want to win titles and, you know, I, I want to go faster. Like I see people in college, you know, I'm not just comparing myself to people in high school. I, I'm seeing people in college that I feel like, why, why are these guys faster than me? Like I need to just get better. So, so, you know, I want to run faster than people running in college and high school and I want to get to college and, and just keep progressing. So, you know, I, I don't, I don't really have any limits. You know, I haven't, 
seen any signs of me slowing down really. Um, so besides like, you know, I tweaked my leg a little bit, but it wasn't any, it's not anything serious. Just, uh, just probably a little bit of recovery from that. And, you know, my, my progression hasn't like, you know, people say that there's like diminishing return when, when you start getting faster, you know, it's harder to get faster as you get faster, but you know, I haven't actually like noticed any of that so far, which is surprising is that like, I feel like I'm progressing at the same speed that I was when I was running, um, like 417 last year around the same time. Uh, like it's, it's weird because, you know, people get, people like kind of stagnate a little bit or they slow down, but, but I haven't, yeah, I haven't really noticed much of that. Cause last year I, I ran 417, I think at UF relays. And this year, a week before that, like, like, so a year in advance to this year, the weekend before I ran that 417, I closed my 32 in, uh, in like 413. So, you know, that's a, that's a, <laughs> that's a big difference. And, and, you know, I don't really know how it happened, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, re- I want to go under, under four. I want to, you know, I think I can run under eight thirty if, if, if I keep getting faster and faster, you know, I, right now, I, you know, I can't really say exactly where my fitness is, but. Um, you know, I think the sky's the limit in high school and, and same in college with, with, uh, coach Palmer and Parvez on the UF team and the other guys, like it's going to, I'm really excited for those who have listened to our conversation today, Riley, and are inspired by your progression in the sport and your journey and overcoming setbacks, sickness, injuries to the point where now we're talking about titles, running sub four, all these things that would put you in the history books. What would be the, the biggest message, takeaway message you want to leave our audience with from your story? Um, I think, you know, this might be a little, uh, a little blunt, but stop feeling sorry for yourself. Um, you know, I feel like a lot of people, they, they get sick or they get, they get hurt or, you know, there's so many external things that can, can affect you as a runner um, that, you know, not just mental, but like things you, you really can't control that could just happen to you, like, like the injuries and stuff. And, you know, if you just sit around feeling sorry for yourself, you know, well, you're, you're just going to prove that, that, that injury took you down, uh, or something like that. Like you, you really got to like get a little mad sometimes since, you know, like that's, you know, that's been big for me because that's how I played soccer was I played soccer angry. I would, you know, try to be the, like, even though I was like, you know, I'm a little guy, like I would pr- like every single soccer game I would go out and, and the first play of the game, I would go and I would go and hit someone, uh, that had the ball, obviously. At like pretty much as hard as I could and just, you know, knock the wind out of them and to set the tone of the game and to, to you know, just right off the bat kind of say like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a little guy, but you know, I don't, I'm, I don't feel, I don't feel weak. I feel strong. And, you know, I've been taking that into running and, you know, every single time something, something happens that you can't control, uh, just make it, that, just make it that more of a mission to go and get back from that than to just, you know, sit around and, you know, feel sorry for yourself. You give me some Connor Burns energy. Uh, I've nicknamed Connor Burns the problem child of running because Jake Paul's the problem child, I guess, of boxing, but he names himself the problem child. Is this something you're yeah. embracing? Like the bad boy of running who just throws out the bold takes, says he's going to beat people. Are you embracing this? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'd say like the bad boy. <laughs> but, you know, I definitely think that, you know, like the way I, I, I think about, you know, running and racing is a little bit different than, you know, a lot of people that have been in the sport their whole lives. And, you know, I have my, my family to, and my, and my soccer career to, to thank for that probably. But, you know, confidence is, is like not really just a thing you're, you're born with, but, you know, if you understand like all the, the math that goes into running and stuff, there's no, like, there's no reason not to be, to be confident in yourself because you know, you, if you if you're confident, you're gonna you're gonna perform to your best abilities. And if you're not confident, you might you might uh, make a mistake and, and stress too much and race below your fitness. But you know, I make it my goal every race to to do exactly what my, my fitness says I can do or better. Like it's almost like the competition isn't really with other people, but it's like against my fitness for me. Like so, if my coach does a workout and tells me how fast I can run, probably or like the, give me a range, I'll be like you know, you know, screw that. I'm, I'm going to go run faster than that. I got to beat my fitness. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of what, you know, makes it kind of seem like maybe I'm, I'm like calling out something like that's like, 
a little uh, a little ambitious or or um, you know given a kind of a bold take. It's it's more of just um, me looking at looking at the facts and then thinking there's no reason to you know think less of myself. So let's just go and get it done. Riley, June twelfth, Brooks Park PR meet is happening off the track. Hopefully, winning a title. What's something you're looking forward to post track post track race at the Brooks PR meet in Seattle? Ooh, I don't know. I've never been to Seattle, so maybe I'll hey, the go, maybe I'll after go. The race is sick. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll have to go check some stuff out. I don't know. You know, my dad normally comes with me to the meets, and you know, after I do good, me and my dad always we always hang out for a bit. So maybe I'll I'll go. Uh, I'll go do something with my dad, like get some food. I'm gluten free too, so it's always like a because I have celiac disease, so I have to. But so it's always uh, it's always nice to go and like find a, a nice place with some gluten free food, and then and and uh, and go eat there with my dad. Like in New York, we uh, we found this place like over by Times Square. It's like it's like a fried chicken place that made like everything gluten free. And you know, I don't eat fried chicken very much because no one really makes it gluten free. So that was cool. I went there with my dad, and we. That's some like root beer floats and <laughs> and some fried chicken, which you know my diet's pretty good, so I don't normally eat like that. But it's good to have uh, you know every once in a while. Is it cool being able to share some of the experiences in the sport with family members like your dad, as you mentioned, and go to new cities, try out new spots, and and have those experiences that I'm sure you'll cherish for the rest of your life? Yeah, I mean, yeah, a big part of of what I've been doing is is uh, because like of all the help my parents and my family have given me. And, you know, it's, it's really hard for me to try and say that, like, I did this all on my own because like my dad has been like huge for supporting my career. And when I was running, when I was playing soccer and running and running track and my mom's always, you know, when I get home, she's always there, you know, ask me about my day and, and, uh, trying to help me in any way she can. And, you know, having parents like that makes it, you know, really easy for me to, to go and do what I do every day because they're, they're so supportive and they're helping me out and they're getting, they're doing research to help uh, understand the sport and to find me, you know, the right trainers, the right, you know, the right uh, people that can fix me up when I'm a little injured or something. And, you know, like I said, like my dad comes to like almost every meet uh, and so does my mom. And, you know, uh, just like, setting an example for my siblings too. Like, like, uh, I have an older brother who's, who's, uh, in college to be an engineer and, you know, he's a big role model for me in terms of like, you know, edu- education and, and stuff like that. And just being like a good person. Cause he's, he's a great guy. And my little sister who just started running. Uh, I want to, I want to, you know, be a role model for her too. And I've been, I know I, I train her, I've been helping her out and yeah, family's definitely just a, a driving force for me because, you know, I, I want to give back to my family. And I feel like, I feel like I'm forever going to be in, in debt to my parents for, you know, how good they've been to me. So, you know, hopefully, you know, I can go and, and uh, do good in college. I can go to the Olympics and, you know, I can buy my house, a dad, my, buy my dad a house in the lake, buy my mom, you know, a little ski, a little ski cabin, you know, I want to, I want to give back to them later. And, you know, I also, you know, <laughs> this is a, this is funny, but uh, my grandpa said that that he has a cousin that I never met, and he was he was morbidly obese uh, about a year ago, maybe two years, and he started following me as a runner when when he heard uh, my grandpa talk about it, and he said that I inspired him to to because I was in his own family and that that he thought well if if Riley can run then then so can I and and this this guy uh, I, you know I don't even know his name because I've never I've never met him he's like a long lost cousin, but. Uh, he said that he went from about 400 pounds to like just over 200, uh, and like wow. is now like living a healthy life, and he's planning on getting un- just under 200 as his goal weight. And you know, that's it's it's pretty pretty great to hear that. You know, this like he if if he as heavy as he was, you know, uh, you know, I think they said that like he wasn't really like supposed to live much longer at that weight. Like it was it was pretty dangerous. And, you know, being told that, that I changed somebody's life like that is, yeah, it means a lot to me and it, it, it helps me just want to keep, keep going. Well, Riley, you're a legend. I appreciate all you're doing in the sport and our conversation today. It's been awesome kind of getting a look inside of the head of the kid who I keep seeing his name show up in my DM. So hopefully the people are pleased. Hopefully they're happy. I have no doubt you're going to do 
amazing things this track season and beyond. And, and most importantly, like I'm walking out of this one inspired. So keep up the great work. I will see you, see you June 12th in Seattle, hopefully putting on a crown, going on the cruise after. Keep crushing it, man. Yep. Thanks for having me.